The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 11, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 11th of February, 1975, in Mexico. Bhagavan means the supreme being. In the English dictionary, when you consult the word God, it is stated that the supreme being. What is that supreme being? We are all living beings, but amongst ourselves there is comparative superlative positions. I am here, you are here, he is there. So you may be better than me, he may be better than you, and somebody else may be better than him. In this way you go on searching after one better than the other, when you ultimately come to a point that nobody is better than him, that is Bhagava. Bhaga means opulence. So there are six kinds of opulences. One opulence is to become very rich. Another opulence is to become very powerful. Another opulence is to become very strong. Another opulence is to become very famous. Another opulence is to become very wise. And another opulence is to become very much renounced. So these six kinds of opulences, when present in the superlative degree, that is Bhagavad. This means, as it is stated in the Vedic literature, natasya sama adhikashta drishyate Nobody is found equal to him or greater than him. In this material world, any person you take, he'll, next moment you will find somebody equal to him and somebody greater than him. But the Vedic information is, God means who has no equal and who has no greater person than him. Actually, Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna, and here it is said, Bhagavan Uvaj. The Bhagavan, the Supreme God, means Krishna. That is the statement in all Vedic literature. Ishara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarvakarana Karana. Means that Ishara, controller, the supreme controller is Krishna. We are also controller. I control a few people, you control a few men, another control uh, more men, another more men, or you can go on. But the supreme controller who controls everyone, all big controllers, that is Krishna. Therefore, when it is said Bhagavan Vacha, that means the person which is presented here with was spoken by the Supreme Controller. So our process of receiving knowledge is from the Supreme Controller because according to the definition already given, wise, the most wise, Krishna or Bhagavan is the most wise. Therefore, if we receive knowledge, from the most wise, then there is no flaw. That is our principle, that we are receiving 
from Krishna, the supreme controller, directly. Just like when there is some misunderstanding, we take help from the law books. Because in the law book or in the law court, the decision is obligatory to both the parties. So to give knowledge, there are many, many parties, but when we receive knowledge from the Supreme, uh, that is all inclusive. So here Krishna says, Asachan Anna Sucha Sang Pragyabadang Suhasa. Arjun has accepted the guidance of Krishna. He has said previously that the position is very perplexing. Therefore, I accept you as my spiritual master and you kindly give me enlightenment. This is the process. We should approach the Supreme or the representative of the Supreme, just like the same example, when there is any controversy, we refer to the law book or to the lawyer, or we take the decision of the law court, and that is final. So here Krishna says to Arjuna that because he has accepted the leadership of Krishna, therefore Krishna is chastising him in this way. Uh, he is chastising in this way that Arjuna was talking with Krishna as friends. So friends means equal status. But he gave up that status. He took the status of a disciple. A disciple means who voluntarily agrees to be disciplined by the spiritual master. When one becomes disciple, he cannot disobey the order of the spiritual master. Shishya, Shishya, this word, comes from the root sasdhatu, means I accept your ruling. So previously Arjun has accepted Shishasti Hang Sadhimang Prapannam. I am now surrendered to you and I agree voluntarily to accept your ruling. This is the relationship between the spiritual master and the disciple. So we have got ten kinds of offenses in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. The first offense is Guru Ravagya means to disobey the orders of Guru, spiritual master. One cannot disobey the orders of Guru. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he is Krishna himself, he also says, Guru more murkha deki korila sasan. My Guru, my spiritual master, saw me a fool, and therefore he has chastised me. So therefore, because Arjun has accepted Krishna as Guru, therefore he is chastising him that you are lamenting on a subject matter which is not done by any learned man. That means you are not a learned man, you are fool. The learned man does not do like this. That means you are not learned man because you are doing this. So Krishna says that you practically, you are not in the knowledge of things, still you are lamenting on the bodily concept of life. Anyone who accepts his body as self, he is not only learned, but he is compared with the animal. That is the statement in the Vedic literature. Jashato buddhi kunape tidhatuke sadhik kalatra dhishubhavma idyadhi jatirtha buddhi salile na karhichit janesu avidgesu saeva go khara. Go means cow and khara means ass. So anyone who accepts this body as self, he is animal, he is not human being. That is the beginning of knowledge. People are accepting knowledge from school, college, university, but at the present moment at least, how many people know that he is not body? Unless we understand this first principle of knowledge, 
there is no question of spiritual advancement of life. So, the beginning of Bhagavad Gita is to give lesson that we are not this body. It will be later on I explain that the spirit soul or the real person is within this body. Just like we are here, we are within this heart and coat, but we are not this heart and coat. So, if this heart and coat is torn, if somebody becomes mad after it and lamenting, that is not very good sense. 